a lot of men want a woman that submits but what are we submitting to i always say this love is giving love is not about you know what i can get a lot of us enter relationships with the mindset of what can i get from this relationship what can he do for me what can she do for me find someone that just you can just let your head out if you don't have edges like me he doesn't care hi guys welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are all doing amazing if this is your first time you're most welcome my name is sharon and i make videos on faith <clears throat> sorry guys i lost my voice faith natural hair wig reviews and everything to do with sharon so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in please do subscribe and join the family i would really appreciate it so i got another um video request in one of my videos i talked about how i knew my husband was the one but i did i was pretty vague with in that video so someone had requested if i can do an in-depth video um to basically help to determine if the person she's dating is the one or not and i hope that you share this with a friend this video is unisex it's both for men and for women um it is christian however if you're not christian you can still use these tips as well so before i start sharing the steps on how to know the one um i personally oh guys my voice i personally do not believe in the one or a soulmate because the idea of a soulmate is that basically your soul belongs to somebody else and as we all know not everyone gets married to their soulmate so you're the different souls merging that are not supposed to be together I don't know it's just not biblical to me so i don't believe in a soulmate or the one i believe that at different points in your life different people are best suited uh for you if that makes sense so for example if you are i don't know 35 and you're a ceo the person that god will send to you at this current age would be different from the person that god would have sent to you when you were like 21 fresh out of college because at that stage of your life you probably needed someone to guide you um through you know your life journey or the decisions you're about to make but now that you're a ceo you've built yourself god is going to give you someone that complements that lifestyle someone that you know is that has strengths in areas that you're weak there is no one path to marriage right yes you might have gone past your prime because you were busy doing other stuff but there's still light at the end of the tunnel as long as you're building yourself and you're working on yourself and you're working on your relationship with god and you are hearing from him trust me it's never too late if sarah can get pregnant at the age of almost 100 girl please you can do anything through christ that strengthens you amen okay so let's get straight into the video so the first point is the right one will not confuse you you would have a lot of clarity and a lot of peace the bible in first corinthians says god is not a god of confusion but a god of peace so if he or she is the right person for you you would never have to doubt if this person loves you or if the, or if the person's intentions are right you would never have to pursue the man as a woman you'll never be the one that's always calling that's always planning dates that's always initiating conversation through his actions you would know that this guy really truly desires you and he's honestly going to tell you his intentions um also you want to watch his actions not only his words because a man can tell you oh i love you i want to marry you but his actions because oh, my voice his actions are do, are like basically um telling you the opposite so if he says that he's interested in getting to know you but he doesn't plan any dates and waits for you to do everything and even when you plan dates he's giving you excuses my love that's a sign that the guy is not interested in you i said in my previous video please do not pursue or chase a man now i'm not saying that you should never initiate conversation of course once in a while you should but in the very beginning when he's trying to get to know you when he approached you first his intentions should be very very clear like not once did i ever doubt my husband's intentions even when when i took a step back like he was heavily pursuing and letting me know his intentions and as a guy if you're watching this video the lady as well would not give you mixed signals the right one will never ever ever confuse you number two ask them what their definition of love is like what does love look like to them i remember my husband when the first time he told me that he loved me i was like how do you know you love me because most times when someone tells you they love you you know they say oh i like how you make me feel i like your body you're this you're that but 
I wanted to be sure that it was biblical. So I asked him, how do you know you love me? And he sent me 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 7, which says, love is patient, love is kind, love keeps no record of wrongdoing, love is selfless. The Bible helps us understand that a man shows his love for a woman through sacrifice and a woman shows her love for her husband through respect and submission. So if you guys are on the same page, trust me, it's going to be amazing because the Bible says, shall two walk yet they agree. So please make sure that you guys both understand what love is and you, your idea of of love is the same because some men the idea of love does not mean sacrifice and some women they don't believe in submission so please ask all these questions in the very beginning i cannot stress how important it is because if you can ask the questions in the beginning it will save you stress and time of pursuing the relationship thirdly now this point is very very important evaluate your relationship with god since you started talking to this person or since you started dating this person because if the person is making you reduce your um, intimacy with god or reduce your christian beliefs or cause you too religious then that is a major major red flag the bible says walk with the wise and you'll become wise but bad company corrupts good morals i'll give you an example um one of my situationships <laughs> um he had insinuated that i was too religious now i was really young then and i was still growing in my faith at the time i was like okay maybe i need to like tone down a bit and like you know water down my christianity because i didn't want to upset him right um but I'm, I'm so grateful to God that I was able to end that situation because what would have happened is I'll continue to reduce my intimacy with God and I'll start accepting things that he did that were unbiblical and it would almost like start to become a norm for me and I get to a point where I'm like oh okay doing this thing isn't that bad after all even though I know it's a sin I don't know if that makes sense so if the person you're with is making you reduce your walk with God or reduce the the passion that you have towards God then that is a major major red flag that's why the Bible says um do not be unequally yoked you don't have to explain your Christianity to this person they should already get it next point this isn't biblical but it's also very important do you need activities to engage with this person or can you just sit with this person with no tv no phones and no entertainment and just have a great conversation this is one reason why people stress on the importance of friendship before my husband and i you know decided to fall in love um we heavily built our friendship right and honestly it's that friendship that has been sustained well not it's not only the friendship that has been sustaining us because God has been, but friendship is one of the things that has been sustaining us in the relationship. He's always telling me like, babe, like maybe you're watching a movie randomly. He'd be like, babe, I really, really enjoy hanging out with you. And it just melts my heart because most of the time, like we spend all day together. We're both homebodies, but still he enjoys my company. You know, he's not tired of me. So the next time you go on a date, I want to encourage you to have more deeper conversations with this person. Don't be distracted by the dinner. Don't be distracted by the ambience don't be distracted by what they look like ask them questions like me personally i love to talk i love to ask a lot of questions because i'm trying to get to know this person i'm not trying to waste any time if you don't ask the questions you're honestly not going to know if this person is the right person for you and i know some people say like opposite attract scientifically yes but in a marriage I don't think it's 100% the case because I'm a homebody, my husband's a homebody. Imagine like, you know, I love to go out and he was a homebody, we most likely will clash a lot. So yeah, there's some things that being opposite works, but I think for the most part, the core of who you are and your core values, it has to be the same because you guys are not going to attract, you're going to clash. So if you notice that you need something to actually hang out with this person, then that is not a good sign because you're obviously not always going to have, you know, an activity to do. Um, so the next time you go on a date with this person, try to make it just like a friendly conversation with nothing um, major that would distract you from getting to know them. The next point is this person will support and understand your goals and your dreams and they will not be intimidated. This is kind of similar to the point where I mentioned that if you guys are, um, you know, you guys share similar interests yeah this will be easy because your future plans are most likely going to maybe not be the same per se but it's going to be along the same path so serving god or raising godly kids however you guys want to do that you know different parents raise their kids differently but the the vision or the goal is to raise godly kids one thing my husband did when we started dating and he still does it now that we're married is he is very invested in my growth and i say this humbly and i say this to encourage you not to settle because the one that god has designed for you 
trust me sis he would really support you and push you the one would always have his his vision and your um a vision at the back of his head it's not going to be self uh, selfish and just him and the support is not just going to be words but also in actions like don't believe the words they say believe the action the next point is can you be yourself around this person this is also very very important and there are times as well that i honestly just want to be a couch potato i don't want to do anything um and he doesn't judge me for that he doesn't uh, punish me for having taking a day off like there's some people you dare not be lazy for one day they constantly you know um say uh, uh, negative words to you to make you feel bad for taking a day off so if you can be yourself if you can be goofy if you can love god loudly if you can just be who you are your authentic self if you can be vulnerable if you can cry with this person if if that person provides a safe space for you to always express yourself and for you to always talk to them about things then that is a huge green flag because one of my situationships i remember um i wanted to bring something up to his knowledge because there was a way he was treating me and i had brought it up and he just fled up and in my mind i'm like i honestly was trying to have a mature conversation here but he got so upset so that is not a safe space because i'm a communicator if i feel like i can't express myself then what are we doing you know find someone that just makes you just you can just let your hair down if you don't have edges like me he doesn't care you know if your hairline is all the way here she doesn't care like it's such a beautiful feeling to be vulnerable around someone especially around someone that you love the next point is they will be curious about you and invested in knowing you basically knowing what you like and what you dislike and how do they do this they ask you a bunch of questions right um the goal is to find out what you like so that they can do more of that and what you dislike so that they can do less of that like i subconsciously was doing it and my husband as well like we were doing it um why that's a healthy situation is because you would know that that person is um dating you or courting you not for what they can get from you but to please you you know i always say this love is giving love is not about you know what i can get a lot of us enter relationships with the mindset of what can i get from this relationship what can he do for me what can she do for me no what can I do for this person? How can I make this person's life better? How can I be of help to this person? How can I be this person's peace, this person's comfort? That is a mentality that most of, that all of us should have going into a, um, um, a marriage or going into a relationship that would hopefully one day lead to a marriage. So how to know if they're the one, they always ask you questions and they listen. You know, when, when you tell them, okay, I like X, Y, Z, they actually take steps to make sure that they do those things that please you. Me, I don't like flowers. I told my husband since when we started dating, please don't get me flowers, just get me food. Or if you want to get me flowers, let it be money. Don't give me grass because I don't know how to take care of it. So like he understands that about me. And last and most definitely not the least, he will he or she will prioritize you over god he is looking up to god to direct his path and him being a leader he needs god to navigate so that he can you know steer with you in the right direction so if he submits to god then it's going to be easier for you to submit to him a lot of men want a woman that submits but what are we submitting to what vision what goal am i submitting to you know women are innately made to submit but we have to be submitting to something that we believe so if he doesn't submit to god and also for the woman as well, not idolizing the man and knowing that you are still submitting to Christ and Christ is still your head. Yes, your husband is your head, but Christ is still your Lord. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want any more videos, um, you can just suggest them in the, not description box, the comment section. Yeah, and I will review them and pray that Holy Spirit helps me talk about them and be consistent. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. God bless. Bye guys.